Hello, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to show you how I made this painting on glass. It's easy. Hi, I'm in trouble. The reason being is that it is November 30th and I'm not ready for Christmas, which normally wouldn't be a big problem because normally I at least try to get some of my presents pre-made online. I want to do that this year and because of COVID, literally everything I wanted to buy for all of the people that I love is sold out. Which leads me to my problem. I've just decided to make everything, which on its own is not a bad thing, but with the time limit. After that slight moment of panic, I decided to actually get to work. I knew I didn't have a photo of what I wanted, but I knew in general what I was looking for. So I hopped on Instagram. I began looking at photos of Sydney Harbor. Specifically, I was looking for something that included the Opera House, Sydney Harbor Bridge, and the sunset because this was a painting that I was doing for my brother. Um, and we had marveled at the amount of sunsets that were on Instagram of Sydney. We were like, nah, this can't be real. It can't be that beautiful. And it was. So I was looking for a photo that encompassed all three of those things and I ended up finding this guy, uh, his name's Bobo, uh, he's also known as the Ink Shooter on Instagram and his work is beautiful. I really love you know, vivid cityscape. I think they capture the vibrancy of the city in a really beautiful way. Specifically, I really like this photo because like I said, it had all of the things that I was looking for. He was also really nice and gave me both encouragement and permission to post a video that wouldn't have been possible without his photography. So if you'd like to check out his work, his Instagram and store are linked in the description. Once I had my photo, I went online. I was looking for a photo to paint by number converter. I found this one color dragon and it worked really well for me. It's pretty simple to use. You just go to their website and insert whatever photo you're trying to make a paint by number of. It then takes it, asks basically how many colors do you want to have, it assesses the image, and then asks you the type of detail you want. I wanted this to be more detailed, so I selected the most detailed version, and then I had it convert the file, and I downloaded it. This is what the download looks like. It starts off with just the photo that you uploaded, uh, a line work one with color, a line work without color. This is the one that I actually used to do the painting process. Uh, a line work with no color but no numbers, I don't know what this is for, and a color palette. I printed all of this out and I got to work. I removed the packaging from the frame, I removed all of like the tools from the back that have it hang, I have no idea how they work because I didn't have to do that part. I removed these little sticky bits that show you how to use a frame, and then I taped off the edges, at least the majority of them, because I am a messy painter. I should have done all of them because I am a very messy painter and that decision comes back to haunt me, but hey, live and learn. Once my frame was prepped, I began working on this paper key that I would stick behind the frame as I was working on it. I did have to print out a couple versions to make it the right size. For some reason, I haven't ever quite figured out how to print the correct size on the first try, but hey, um, I keep trying, so that counts for something, right? I taped it to the back of the glass. The painter's tape did not work at all, so I ended up using scotch tape. Also, it didn't matter if I was perfectly centered. I tried to get relatively centered on the frame, but since I know I'm not going to do straight lines and I know I wanted to kind of like fade out into the glass, I didn't exactly need to be perfect. And then it was time to pay! Um, this first day was really just about getting as much of the base colors on. It was a little weird. I was working with enamel paints, which I wasn't quite used to. Um, so they kind of almost like you really needed to blob paint down at first which made it pretty difficult to be exacting. I knew I was going to have to go in and do like details and touch-ups eventually so I wasn't super worried but to make sure I got like enough pigment on there that it was really vibrant and beautiful I ended up doing like a lot of blobbing of the base shapes because otherwise they were turning out a little transparent. This day I started with black because it was the easiest color. I didn't need to mix it and it was a really solid base color to do all of my other colors that I was mixing around. So I start with the most dark areas and then I get consistently lighter doing more uh, browns and oranges and then eventually blues in the sky. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize that my phone was low on charge. It didn't give me a sound signal. So this is partially incomplete. Day two. It's after work. 
two days later, and I realized that several things are leading this to not be a very great quality video. The first thing is that I didn't realize the camera had gone off. So yeah, this is where the painting's at now. But I totally missed the part where I filmed the majority of this guy, which is not great. The second thing that I realized is that my angle kind of sucks. If you look at it like straight down, it's fine. You can see that I'm like covering these spots. Hold on, where's a good one? Where's a good one? Appropriately. But if I like look from below, it looks like I'm missing them. So it's quite difficult if I can't look at this most of the way on, which makes it very difficult to film. Um... I also, I keep putting my head in front of the camera. Not great for showing what I'm doing. And the last thing was I realized I didn't show colors and what I'm doing and how I'm mixing them. So I got colors red, orange, yellow, blue, black, white, and then this clear stuff, which is supposed to be thinner, but I really haven't been using it because I don't know what I'm doing. These are epoxy paints. So they have like a sheen to them. It's almost like painting with like nail polish. Um, which is just like a different experience, um, but it's like hard and shiny and beautiful and then I screwed up there. Not great, but we'll fix that. The first thing I'm going to do today though is I think I'm going to mix some of these yellows. This is the sheet and how I've been mixing them. Um, these are colors directly from the PDF thing. Um, I decided not to use the color one and that my like blue in the can this like darkest version of blue is going to be 14 which i think is fine because the only one was really high up on the painting it was like up here and i didn't want to go that high i wanted to like fade out into the glass so i decided to cross out one uh 14 is a true color that i actually have pre-mixed so is two and then the other ones i've just been kind of mixing based on the base color and then adding tints of other colors to make them as close to um, what I think they're supposed to be as possible. You can see here how many like test tries I'll have um, like starting to mix something versus the actual color I finally get at the end. Um, obviously more colors means that it was way harder to mix particularly these guys gave me a ton of trouble. I'm gonna start with color six because it is the darkest yellow that I haven't mixed yet. Because yellow is like the most prominent color, I'm gonna shake yellow and I'm gonna pour that out. This yellow is gonna to be too bright for like what I actually want to do. So I'll just pour a little bit. That was probably more than a little bit. It needs to get lighter because this is really too dark. So I'm gonna add white to make it more of the pastel. And then I also see just like a tint of orange. Um, the tint of orange is gonna do a couple things. First, it's gonna tie it into like the oranges that are in the rest of the sunset and then I think it'll also get me to this color that is truly there so shoot where's my paintbrush so obviously I'm gonna start with yellow that's like my base I'm gonna make sure it's real mixed here because it's like one of the only colors I didn't mix fully last time I painted and then I'm gonna mix a little bit of white in with it and I'm gonna see like kind of where I'm at darkness wise I think I'm a little too light I think I need to go darker so I'll mix a little bit more yellow in, and it definitely needs. So like here, I'll test it, but it's gonna be too light. It's more of like a Easter color than a sky color that I want. So I'll mix a little more, uh, I'll mix some orange in to begin with. And that should cab us a lot closer to the color that I actually want. I think it needs a little more white. I think it's a little too dark. But yeah, I like this method because then I don't have to spend a butt ton of money on paints. Each of these was probably like a dollar or two for each thing of paint, which isn't cheap, but if you only use a couple colors, mm, it's still a little too light. I'm trying not to make it too orange though. That looks pretty good. I feel like it needs to be duller, if that makes sense. So to get things duller, I'll either use a black or a blue. I think I don't want to go too dark in this one. This blue doesn't seem to have like a lot of pigment in it when I mix it with the other colors. Like the black will make it really dark and the blue won't. So I'm going to try that one because I don't want to like super color this. That looks so good. You can barely tell where I painted on it and that's what I want. So that is the color I will use for swatch six. When I'm done like a session of painting, this is what my plate looks like. Ridiculous.
My second day of painting was really focused on filling in pretty much anything on the anything on the glass that didn't already have paint in it. I find that when I'm painting, one of the hardest parts and one of the most frustrating parts for me is getting just the general like shape and tone right. And once I've done that, the finishing is just kind of like natural and easy and very exciting. In fact, part of the reason why I chose to do this as a paint by number was this year I just didn't feel like I had the mental capacity to do this painting from scratch. Normally I do them, um, you know, based off of my own reference photos, but I just <laughs> couldn't deal. So I basically hacked it as best I could to make it easier and then to make that part that's most difficult for me go quicker. However, I do also think that if you're not super comfortable with painting or, you know, you just want like an easy fun craft to do to create like some beautiful artwork for your space or as a gift, that this is a pretty easy way to do it. It's definitely time consuming, but I think it makes a really beautiful personalized gift and all in all, like the colors on this are pretty vibrant and pretty stunning. So yeah. So the goal today was just to get it to a point where everything pretty much had a shape and a color and was filled in and then that the perimeters had a fairly good shape so that the next day I could really focus on that finishing detail work. The biggest thing that took time this particular day was the mixing of paints because I only had six paints that I was going off of. It just, it took a lot of time because every single color that I was painting was a custom color. And that mixing process is just, I don't know, always seems intensive. It's way easier if you can just get it out of a little bottle. What happened? No, it just doesn't give you a warning. I don't know why it doesn't give you a warning. That's insane. You probably have all your sound things off. Okay. You're mutated. So can we pretend it went well and that there's video and I'll try again tomorrow? Yeah? Thanks. Day three. It is day three of three, I hope, of working on this painting. I put on my Christmas spirit today, Christmas sweater today, and I'm just filled with the creative spirit. So hopefully I can get this actually finished. This is where we're at. Here's my painting. I think it looks da -da 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 dope. Anyway, I'm really happy with it. Um, I basically just done all of like the little paint by number things and I like it. I like it a lot. I like how vivid the colors are. I like that you can actually see that it's like a bridge, an opera house, the bay, the sunset. I think that's great. However, I think it also can be improved. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this, um, background like paper and just get rid of that um and then I'm gonna just start to freehand all of the detail that I'm like not quite happy with I think I'm gonna start with the bridge uh where's the original painter here's the original photo um so it's like a lot more structured it's got these like cross bracing members it's got these like vertical cables it's got like a little flag on top which I want to put in the only thing I'm concerned about is like how I'm going to be able to paint that thin of a line with the brush I'm using. It is like, well, like a super thin tip, but I'm gonna need to be really careful about how much like paint I'm picking up on it because I found that like with these enamel paints, it's really easy to just like blob stuff on. But since I'm going in and doing detail work now, like that would not be a great strategy. So we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna learn some things, but that's important to human growth, right? The second thing I want to do when I'm approaching this is I'm going to define like the opera house a little more like some of these lines a little bit wonky like not in a bad way just in like an artistic interpretation. I really don't like how though like this line is super hard between these two colors that needs to soften a bit. Um, also I wanted to find like a little more there's you can see here versus like the actual painting. Um, so that needs to just be like 
defined a little more clearly so you can see that little alcove and then those two pretty little curves come down um but yeah I just want to make this like a little bit cleaner than it is I'm happy with like lines like this but I want to really define where one shape ends and where the next one begins and then the oh well not the last thing um but I want to go back in to this water area um and I really like this like red of the sunset reflecting but realistically there should be some of that here and also whatever I did there is fucked up um so yeah I want some more orange over here and then I probably want to like blend the two into each other a little bit better than they are the last last step will be adding little details and little lights into here and into like our our little cityscape back there because this has actually got like a bunch of lights and I think that is just going to set off this photo and this painting and it's gonna look absolutely stunning um and I also want to do some like refinement on this particular pier just because it looks a bit funny to me um but yeah that's the plan for today the good news is from a couple feet back which is like the distance that you would actually observe this from I think it looks really good and really like this doesn't also if it makes you feel better <laughs> need to be perfect like the thing I tell myself to feel better about art is that it's really just about creating blobs that look enough like another shape to trick your eye into thinking that it is something. Um, and I think this does that. So I'm pretty pleased. I like how bright the colors are. So that also pleases me. I'm pretty much done. I put a quote on the back so that no one can see it. And then I just need to take this tape off and fix this. I put all the tape on it because I know I'm like super, super messy as a painter. And guess what I did? I didn't put it here, so I got paint on it. But you'll see that when it's on the wall. So hopefully it comes off somehow. I don't, I don't know. For the record, uh, God, there's nothing on the record. Um, <laughs> mineral spirits, which you have to use to clean up, uh, these oil-based paints anyway, cleaned the paint that I got off here off right away, and then I just washed it with soap and water. If anyone is, like, by any chance doing this at home and, like, actually going to follow this tutorial, I would try not to backlight it. It, like, looks super patchy. Or if you're going to backlight it when you're done, I would like work with a light because it doesn't look great. Like it's got all these holes in it. Um, but from the front, it still looks really pretty. So yeah, really just depends on like the effect that you're going for and what you, like how you want to finally display this when you're done. Le finale finale. Like this video please hit the thumbs up button if you have any questions comments or things you'd like to see in the future please let me know down below and if you're new here and you want more content please subscribe my next video will be about the rehabilitation of the victorian porch because topic consistency yeah well thanks for watching bye